Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. I'm about ready to head out to the range. Let me tell you what I've been up to. You know, I've been loading this ladder test that we talked about in our first episode. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to find the barrel harmonics, learn about, if you want to call it, map the barrel harmonics of this 308 Winchester Ruger Precision Rifle. And so what I'm doing is I'm I'm using ADG brass. Uh, this is some really good stuff. Kind of showed itself uh, in last season's episodes. We used this same brass to load my extreme bullets. And those were the 165 grain uh, bullets. So that was the very first time that this brass had been fired. Not all the brass had been fired. And what I'm doing now is I'm using this brass for our next experiment, which is uh, on barrel harmonics. So I'm loading that brass with CCI bench rest primers, BR2 primers. And these premium primers are well worth a little bit of extra money. And if uh, you want to look at the experiment that we did on that, there will be a link in this video for our Primer Mania video uh, where we looked at, well, all things primers. And I'm also using this tool to actually affect the priming, and that is the 21st century shooting priming tool. This thing is so precise, so well machined, it's incredible. And it makes a difference in the... Uh, consistency of the primer seedings, which translates into consistency of the accuracy. That's in that same Primer Mania video, and it's well worth that little bit of extra effort. A little bit pricey, but for those shooting for precision ammo, this is a very good investment. Now, I'm also using RL15 powder. This is Alliance Reloader 15, and I've been using this quite a bit in the same 308 Winchester. It actually performed a little bit better for me than did Varget. Varget's an excellent powder. It's kind of my go-to powder. I use it tremendously, but um, I wasn't getting quite the precision I was looking for, and RL15 edged it out just a little bit. Now, this is actually not a brand new load workup for me. Uh, I know the powder charges that this rifle can handle, uh, but it is a little bit different because the ADG Brass, uh, the makers of ADG Brass uh, Atlas Development Group, they tell you to approach the load workup as if it is uh, brand new. But you know, when I did the last season's workup, it really wasn't much different at all than Lapua and some other premium brass. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start at a 41.0 grain. That's effectively uh, the minimum charge uh, according to Alliant for a 168 grain bullet. And then based on past experience and looking at my reloading records, I know that I can go safely to 43.4 grains of the same powder. Now I'll note that the optimal charge weight velocity node for this powder, for this load um, in this rifle was 42.9 grains. However, that was with Lapua brass. And I'm not so sure it's going to translate directly across with the ADG. So that's kind of a new data point for this particular experiment. Now I'm going to be topping this whole thing off with Sierra tipped Match King bullets. These, I just can't beat these bullets uh, with this rifle. You know, uh, years ago I, I gave Sierra a fair shake on lots of different loads I was working up for my 7mm rem mag my 338 Win Mag, 243 Winchester, and you know, they just never really performed very well. And so I would, I would load some Sierras more or less just for Fowlers, 
Uh, they tended to be a little bit cheaper than the Barnes bullets and some of the other bullets that I was using, the Lapua scanners, scanner L's I was using in the 243. Uh, but once again, with the 308 Winchester, when I started loading it, I gave Sierra a good uh, chance again, or a good shake. And in this rifle, there is just no beating these Sierra tipped match kings. Excellent ballistic coefficient, excellent precision, excellent accuracy. And you know, I was talking to some of the folks over there at Sierra about my experiment, getting some tips from them, and so a, a big thank you to the folks at Sierra for some of the, the tips that they gave me regarding the experiment that we're now going to start. So I've got everything loaded. We're going to head out to the range. I've got nine shots, nine rounds only. I'm going to be running two cameras on that remote target um, or remote cameras on that target because I really need to see where each round is impacting on that target and I can't afford to have a camera failure. So remember on the ladder test, the incremental load development method that we want to load one, at least one, of these rounds in each of these charges and be very careful to note that this is round one and round two and fire them in that correct order. Take a look at your primers, take a look at that spent brass for any signs of, of pressure. I'm going to be doing that Yes, I have ran lots of different powder charges with the same powder and bullet and so on and so forth, but I haven't done it with this ADG brass. I'm going to still watch it pretty darn closely. And we're going to fire each of those rounds in sequence using the exact same point of aim. And what I want to watch is the point of impact. So, that sets it all up. Let's head out to the range shoot these nine rounds, and then we're going to come back in. I hope you stick with me. We're going to go over uh, what we saw and how this thing performed. Same point of aim each time. Six. And number nine. You know, we just recorded a lot of data, and we're not going to have time to analyze every little bit of that data, but we're certainly going to hit the high points right now. And we're going to begin by focusing on the target and the point of impact of each of those rounds. Now, round one, kind of a high flyer there. Interesting that it did fly so high because I fired a number, five um, Fowlers before um, shooting any of this workup. Now the entire group one through nine or the session one through nine didn't really follow and I really wasn't expecting it to follow a perfect ladder type of pattern. And in fact, of all the shooting I've done, I've never seen the rounds uh, follow a true ladder pattern. But if you think about it, we really shouldn't expect to see a perfect ladder being established because of barrel harmonics. 
the oscillations, the vibrations, the resonance is causing one round to fly high, a little bit over here to the left with an oscillation, a little bit more to the right on another oscillation, so on and so forth. But the three rounds that are most interesting to me were rounds six, seven, and eight. Those three grouped pretty nicely. Now remember, this is at 200 yards. Uh, they grouped pretty nicely and created what I would call a cluster or a node, a harmonic node. Now I should also point out that the entire spread, the extreme spread of all nine of those rounds was only 2.6 inches. So that all by itself isn't too terrible. Uh, yes, it's more than MOA, but we had a wildly uh, varying powder charge behind those if we're really shooting for a group, which we weren't. Now rounds 6, 7, and 8 we're using a powder charge of 42.5 through 43.1 grains of RL15. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to load three separate groups, potential uh, kind of fine-tuning harmonic node groups. I'm going to use 42.6 grains. Now why not 42.5? Well 42.6, if you remember our last season, 42.6 with this exact same brass uh, was kind of the sweet spot for those 165 grain bullets and it might be the same thing in this case. I'm going to go ahead and take a chance on that. Then we're going to load 42.8 grains and 43.1. So I've got three rounds uh, that I'm going to be shooting or three five shot groups that I'm going to be shooting uh, all potential kind of fine-tuning of the harmonic node that we just saw. Now as I said earlier, the harmonic node testing, ladder test, incremental load development method, whatever you like to call it, uh, really doesn't look at all at the chronograph and the muzzle velocities. Really looks and focuses on the point of impact of those rounds downrange. But I still want to take a look uh, at the muzzle velocities that we were achieving. And when I graphed the muzzle velocities from my lab radar with powder charge on the x-axis, muzzle velocity on the y-axis, this load workup was highly predictable, an R squared of 0.95, meaning 95% of the variability in the muzzle velocity was explained or could be explained by the powder charge. So that is really a very good sign. Lots of consistency in the entire load workup. We also saw a velocity node or optimal charge weight sill established as part of this same load workup. And it was established at 42.2 through 42.5 grains of RL15. Recall I was using 0.3 grain increments uh, between each of these loads. So that too is interesting because it starts to coincide with our first uh, part of the harmonic node that we were noticing on target. So be sure not to miss our next episode of Extreme Reloading. We're going to head back out to the range and shoot three five-shot groups using these same primers the same ADG brass charged with 42.6, 42.8, and 43.1 grains of RL15, pushing 168.2 grain Sierra tipped match kings at 200 yards. Until next time, take care.